I got to tell you, this is something really strong. It is definitely picking up right now. WNBC reporter Brian Thompson earlier this evening in Seaside Heights, New Jersey. What was Hurricane Sandy is now called something else, uh, and it is dumping rain and producing dangerous sustained high winds all over the eastern seaboard right now. The number of people without power across the region is estimated to already be in the millions, and the peak of the storm's impact may be yet to come. Let's bring in MSNBC meteorologist Dylan Dreyer uh, for an update on the current conditions and the track of the storm. Uh, Dylan, thank you, th thanks for your help with this. What can you tell us about uh, the, the change in nomenclature for the way the storm is described and, and what else we should be expecting tonight? Rachel, it's a good question because I wish there was a word that was more ominous than post-tropical cyclone because it's not like this went from a hurricane and weakened to a tropical storm and then a tropical depression. It is still a very powerful storm. We still have wind gusts up near 80 miles per hour. So it really took on just a whole different form. It lost its tropical characteristics. The development of the storm with the warm center that makes it a tropical system. Now it is transformed and merged with that cold front to the west, and it's taking on more of a nor'easter type uh, setup here. So that's why there is no real word for it, but the title doesn't matter. This is still a very strong storm. You can see the rain is just racing inland as the eye of the storm crossed over southern New Jersey at about 8 o'clock today officially, although things did start to uh, weaken and calm a little bit, just like the eye of a storm in Atlanta. Atlantic City, but it's north of the storm where we're seeing our strongest impacts right now. This area of low pressure now that we'll call it will actually slow down. It's going to slow in forward speed to the point where it's going to rain and rain across portions of Pennsylvania and New York State, and it's eventually going to cause some inland flooding where several inches of rain is likely. Look at Baltimore, Maryland. This wow. particular model is predicting more than 10 and a half inches of rainfall. So we have a coastal concern, but a eventually we're going to have an inland concern because of all that flooding. Winds are still gusting right now up to 68 miles per hour in New York City. Trenton, New Jersey, inland a little bit, still gusting up near 60 miles per hour. We had reports of an 82 mile per hour wind gust in Islip. So the winds on the north side of this storm were certainly strongest, but elsewhere we're still getting gusts up near 50 to 60 miles per hour. You see that orange I guess blob there, that is stretching from northern New England still all the way down into North Carolina. That's where winds will still be at 39 miles per hour and higher. That's through Tuesday afternoon. Mm. That's through Wednesday morning. Then eventually the winds will start to ease, but they'll still be up to around 20, 30 miles per hour as the storm continues to move up to the north and east. We're talking about the storm surge. This is still going to be a concern. Look at the high tide time for southern portions of Long Island and uh, areas across northern Long Island into Massachusetts. Not until about 9.30 to 11 o'clock tonight and even beyond midnight for the Massachusetts area. So we still have that potential in that little shade of purple there for a 6 to 11 foot storm surge. That's what we're expecting through the night tonight. And even as we go into tomorrow morning, we have another high tide cycle at about 8 o'clock in the morning. We are going to see the ebb and flow of the high and low tides still create some flooding concerns, especially tomorrow morning, even into Tuesday nights high tide cycle as well. Then we showed pictures of the snow. We have picked up more than 10 inches of snow already in the mountainous regions of West Virginia, and it looks like those regions will end up with more than a foot of snow. So that's why it really is a hybrid storm here that has taken on at first hurricane characteristics. Now it's transforming into more nor'easter characteristics. And I wish there was a better name for it because post-tropical cyclone really doesn't sound threatening, but this is still going to be a storm we're talking about for several days because of those gusty winds, because of the torrential rains, and the power outages and the power crews to get to those power outages will still be an issue because tomorrow's not going to be that great. Wednesday's a little bit better, but still not great. So it's going to take a while for the cleanup to happen. Dylan, in terms of that snow area, do we expect that the, fair, the area affected by that snowfall is expected to get much larger, or do you expect the snow event to be confined to where it's already been? It's more of an elevation event. You know, we are seeing some of that Arctic air start to work in on the backside of the storm, but it does look like most of the accumulating snow, or at least the significant accumulating snow, has been in the highest elevation. So the mountainous regions back through uh, Maryland, back into West Virginia, that should be the region that is the 
only region that should have to deal with significant snowfall. Okay. MSNBC meteorologist Dylan Dreyer, uh, you're very busy. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. I appreciate it. All right, we will continue now to monitor the dramatic weather on the eastern seaboard tonight, which, of course, is happening just before the finish line of a presidential campaign marathon. Uh, plenty of news about that, including Governor Mitt Romney uh, finishing the way he started. Please stay with us.